Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi. Flash CC seems to be getting new updates every three months or so at the moment. So the video I made, What's New in Flash Professional CC 2014, is now kind of out of date because they've put even more new features into the new version. So first off, we've got animation guides. They're a tweak on motion guides. There's custom brushes, which enables you to choose different types of shapes and save them. We're not gonna be looking at the audio and scripting support in WebGL because I don't do tutorials on coding, but it's still an exciting new development. There's also a few usability enhancements. You've got flip horizontal and flip vertical being integrated into the transform panel. That's just a little thing. And in the motion editor, you can flip the property curve. So you can essentially flip your eases or flip the animation that you've done, and reverse it. There's some improvements for publishing to x86 based Android devices and publishing to Air. But again, I'm not gonna go into those because I don't tend to do tutorials on coding. Because I'm essentially an animator and when I need some code, I get a developer to help me with that. Importing SWF files is actually an old feature that they got rid of in CC and they, they now reintroduced because the user base asked for it, which is great if you get an SWF off a client who doesn't have the original FLA file and wants you to extract some assets from it in order for you to use in the new animation. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so what we've got here is a star, and it's passing along this motion guide, like so. And if you don't know how to do one of these, I recommend you check out my motion guides tutorial on my website, hexjibber.com. So this is nothing new, we've been able to do this for a long time, but one of the new features that's available in Flash is these ones that we see over here. When we click on our first keyframe, I'll just collapse my transform panel and bring it down. So in the tweening part of the properties panel, we're used to seeing orient to path. If we turn that on, you can see that the star uses the orientation of the path to determine its rotation. But we've got two new options. We've got scale along path and color along path. So I'm just gonna turn orient to path off. And in order to get scale along path, we have to use another new feature in Flash variable width strokes, which I've made a little video for, if you want to check that out on my website. So we need to make this motion guide into a variable width path. So I'm going to go to my motion guide layer, you can see it says guide star, and I'm just going to get my variable width tool, and I'm going to make it thick in the middle, like so, and it's thin at the end, so I'm just gonna make sure that it gets thin a little bit quicker by just adding a couple of extra variable width points, like so. And if we tick this scale along path option here, you'll notice that as we play it through, our star gets loads bigger in those areas where the path is much thicker. So you can get some pretty strange effects. Let's maybe dial down the thickness a little bit so that we can get something a little bit more subtle. So I'll push it down like that, play it through once more. There we go. And we can combine that, of course, with Orient Path, if I tick that as well. Press play. There we go. So it's orienting to the path and it's also getting bigger as it moves along. So that might be quite useful if you want you to do an object flying along a path, but also getting closer to the camera as it moves. You could maybe use this effect for that. Let's take a look at color along path. So I'll just turn scale along path and orient path off. So if we choose color along path, so now I'm on my first keyframe, you can see that it's turned our star a funny color. It's made the stroke red and the center yellow. So it's using the color from the stroke to determine the color of our symbol there. And then it goes back to green at the end. Okay, so what we can do now is we can select our stroke, go to our color palette, make sure that we've got our stroke color selected and choose 
instead of solid color, let's go for linear gradient. And we get this black to white default gradient there. We can change the colors to make it a bit more interesting. We're going to change it from red transitioning into green. So we've got some nice contrasting colors. I'm going to play that through. You can see that our star now transitions from red to green using the color from that stroke and all the nuances in that gradient. Let's click on our stroke again and we can add an extra color. So I'm going to click blue and now it goes from red to blue to green. We can of course turn Orient's path on as well so we get even more complex animation. And of course, this guide won't show up in our final animation. It'll look like this. So color cycling is something that you could only do with shape tweens and shapes before. So now you can do it using symbols and classic tweens by using a motion guide with a gradient on it. Fantastic. So you should be familiar with the brush tool in Flash. If you're not, make sure to check out my tutorials on the brush tool on my website, hexdiver.com. The brush tool has been enhanced very slightly with the addition of custom brush shapes. Now, in my opinion, it doesn't really change things massively from the way they were before, but let's take a look. We go over to our properties when we've got the brush tool selected, which you can select using the shortcut B on your keyboard. You've got these options for different shapes of brushes that have always been there. In fact, normally you'd access them down here. And of course, you can change the size of your brush. That's fairly easy. You can also do that using the square bracket keys. But there's a little plus here, which enables you to create your own nib options. And these essentially are like the presets, but you have a tiny bit more control over them. So you can change the angle like this. So obviously, this is a circle, so the angle doesn't really make any difference at the moment. But if we tweak the flatness, you can see that we can get sort of nice thin nib like so, or we can have our original fat one. So I'm gonna leave it at something like 50%. We could also choose a square nib and do the same sort of thing. Change the angle, change the flatness. I'm gonna leave mine on a circular nib like that. Click OK. And then I'm just gonna get my graphics tablet out. You can see I now have this slightly different line and get some different qualities of lines with it and of course I can turn my pressure on so I can get variations in the width of my line. So that's just a little tweak in Flash. You may find it useful but it doesn't give you a vast amount more control than you had originally because the presets that already exist essentially cover all of the options apart from this one that I've made this slanted sort of thin oval, which you can see doesn't exist in the current options. So I've just made a terrible mistake. That amazing animation that I did of the star moving along a path and changing the scale, and the color, you know, I closed it without saving it. That was stupid of me, but luckily I exported it as an SWF before I closed it. So if I wanted to get that animation back or extract any of the symbols, from that, then what I can do now in Flash is I can import an SWF into my FLA document. So I'm going to go to File, Import, Import Stage, and you can see that I've now got my scale along path for SWF. You can see that I was lying to you. I did save it as an FLA, but this is just a deliberate mistake for this video. And I'm going to click on that and click Open. And you can see what's happened now, if I just delete this action safe layer, is we've got all of these keyframes and we've got all of our animation back. And if we look in our library, we've got this symbol 5. So it hasn't brought over the name of the symbol, but it has brought our symbol into our document. So we can now use that in different scenes or in different documents. You can copy and paste it. And rename it as star. So that's a really useful feature. It's as simple as that. It hasn't brought in the motion guide because it's just brought the animation itself in from the SWF. Motion guides don't actually get exported into the SWF itself. So 
that was a feature that's existed for a long time in Flash that they got rid of in CC and now in CC 2014, circa October, you can do it again. So there we go, marvelous. So I'm just gonna draw an amazing asymmetrical drawing with the incredible new brush that I've created, this little flat brush. And I'm gonna go over to my transform panel and you'll notice that now flip horizontal, flip vertical, now they're in the transform panel. So that's really, really useful. A very small new feature, but useful nonetheless. So just before I go, one more thing, Colombo style. You can see that I've got this new type of motion tween here with my star symbol that I got from my SWF. And I've got a little ease where it's gradually slowing down and it's moving from left to right. One of the new things you can do is right click on one of these new motion tweens and you can flip it. And when you do that, you can see that it now moves in the opposite direction. So it starts off on the left hand side and then moves to the right and gradually slows down. If I undo back to my original and then right click and go reverse, you can see that we now achieve the same result essentially as flipping. We move from right to left and it gradually slows down as it moves across. So they're both really useful. That's it for my October 2014 updates to Flash CC. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and like this video and subscribe to my channel for more. I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Coloring and Activity Book and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike and are well worth checking out.